Hello everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I just want to build an awesome, fun project for my youngest daughter. The movie Thor Ragnarok just started and everyone in my family is a huge fan of Marvel comics and Marvel movies and Thor in particular. In fact, most of my woodworking mallets that I build and sell are sort of loosely based on Thor's hammer. But today I had a silver maple log sitting in my shop and I thought I would go ahead and try to make a full size version for my daughter to take to the movie tonight. This is a tree that grows here locally and I got the log from a friend who had actually had it stored in his garage for a number of years so it was actually already dry. I put the widest blade on my bandsaw and decided I was going to cut the mallet out of it. The full size dimensions of Thor's hammer, at least the one that's used in the movie, is 5.5 inches by 5.5 inches and 8.5 inches long. And I was able to get that out of this log pretty easily. I'm also going to go ahead and include a free set of plans with 3D drawings and exact dimensions in case you decide you want to make one for yourself. Now you certainly don't have to cut this out of a log. You could actually go down to the, your local big box store and maybe buy some 4x4s or some 2x4s and glue up the stock to this size and make your mallet head out of that. Once I got it cut to approximate dimensions on my bandsaw, I jointed a couple of edges square and then I took it over to my table saw to square it up and get it down to the exact size. It's obviously too big for my table saw's blade to cut through it in one pass, but it's no big deal. Since I had those two edges square from the jointer, I can just flip it over and cut it the other way, and that'll finish off the cut. After that, I took it over to my miter saw to cut the end square. Here again, the miter saw isn't big enough to cut through the whole thing in one pass, so I'll just do it in two passes. It looks like there's a little bit of spalting in this log and it has kind of a unique looking grain structure to it. You probably noticed the giant knot in the log when I was cutting it out. I really couldn't avoid that in the cutting process and so I figured that's no big deal. I'll just mix up some epoxy and I'll fill it with that. I use West Systems two-part epoxy, and epoxy is fairly expensive, uh, but if you buy it in large quantity, it's not too bad. I'll put a link to this in the description in case anybody's interested in it. So there's lots and lots of bubbles because of the way I mixed it, and I'm actually going to kind of tamp it down in here and make sure it gets in all the holes, and that's going to add even a few more bubbles, but that's no problem. I can take a heat gun, or you could even take a torch or something like that, just be careful not to overheat it. And if you heat the surface of it up, it'll drive all those air bubbles to the top, and they'll pop, and you'll be left with nice, nice uh, clear epoxy. Once that's done, I let it cure for 24 hours, and then I took my belt sander to it to smooth it out. I use a 36 grit belt on my belt sander to get it down flush to the surface. Then I'll switch over to my random orbit sander with 60 grit, and I'll just kind of work my way up from there, going through all the grits uh, on the epoxy and on all the sides of this uh, hammerhead. When that's done, I'll take some careful measurements and I will lay out all of the angles and how I want them cut. And if you want to get the free plans I'll have down in the description, you can see what those angles are so that you can cut it for yourself. Even though I know the angle, I'm going to use my bevel gauge to hold against my saw blade to set it exactly. And while the block is square, it's a good time to draw our diagonals and uh, put a little hole punch in so that I know where exactly I will be drilling in a hole for the handle. Here I'm going to set my bevel gauge up against there. I know from my measurements it's supposed to be 120 degrees, which is actually 30 degrees down from straight up and down on 90. 
but I'll put that there and make sure that it looks the way it looks on my board and then I'll go ahead and make the cuts. So you could create a jig to hold this here in place if you want and perhaps you want to do that if it makes you feel a little bit safer by all means. I didn't do it. Um, the, my table saw is very flat and this board has a very large surface, the, this, this hammer head here. So I felt pretty comfortable just holding it vertically and making the cuts. But each person should take responsibility for their own safety and only cut something if you feel safe doing it. And here's a quick glance at what it looks like. It's uh, starting to look a little bit better here uh, after those cuts. The next step, I'll move the saw blade down to 45 degrees and I'll cut the corners off to the correct distance according to the plans. And I think with each set of cuts, it's looking closer and closer to Thor's hammer. So Thor's hammer also has a bevel at the corners. And so what I've done is I've taken two big blocks of wood, uh, I've cut them at 45 degrees, and I've, made them, I've glued them to a board in the back to create a jig to allow me to chop these corners off safely. And finally, if you can see that transitional cut line between the flat portion of the hammerhead and the angled portions, you see it's not very noticeable. So what I'm going to do here is put a small shoulder there. I've got my blade raised up a little bit less than an eighth of an inch, and I'm just going to I set it at the right distance with my fence. I'm just going to run a quick cut all the way around on those to give me a real clean cut shoulder and make it real obvious uh, that we have a separation there. And I think that makes it look a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. I wasn't going to put these decorative cuts in the bottom, but at the last minute I decided to go ahead and do it. And just one more little step to make it a little bit more like Thor's hammer. I had a small piece of six quarter walnut, so I thought I would go ahead and cut a square out of it to make my hammer handle with. And of course I'm going to take it over to my lathe and turn it round. If you don't have a lathe, you could start with a square you could actually use a router bit, use like maybe a 3 8 or half inch radius roundover bit, round all four corners, and then you can sand it from there and you can get it pretty close to exactly round. And so I'll do some light sanding to clean up some of those scratch marks since I'm not very good at the lathe. For this step, I had a piece of 8 quarter maple and I'm going to use this to add some accent pieces to the handle itself. Since I can't really do any metal work for a quick project like this, I thought I would just make these accent pieces that go on the end of the hammer and on the top of the hammer right before the head out of wood. And I can do that fast enough and I think it'll look good. So the one that goes on the bottom, I've drilled a hole down to within about an inch of the bottom of that piece there. So it'll slide onto the bottom and I'll have maple all the way around the butt of the hammer. And on the piece that's going to slide up to the top, just below the hammer head, I'll drill this one all the way through. I didn't really want to leave them fully square to go over to my lathe, so I thought I would just take the corners off a little bit. And since I used calipers to check the size as I was sanding the mallet handle down to, it fit nicely. I'm just going to use uh, CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue, to bond this onto the handle since it will glue right away and I can turn it within a couple of minutes. 
And here's the piece that's going to go on the top side, just below the hammer head. I've got to take a quick measurement with it against the hammer head to see how far down to slide that. And then I'll mark it carefully with a pencil so that I can glue it in place. I'm going to go ahead and use the CA glue here as well. So I've got it remounted back on my lathe and now I can turn the two maple pieces down. When I got to shaping the top one, I realized I probably made it way too long and so I decided to go ahead and shorten it a little bit. Some more sanding to get this down to perfect. And I basically went through all the grits all the way up to I think 800 or 1000 grit. And now it's time to drill our hole all the way through this giant hammerhead. When I got to this point, I realized that my drill bit wasn't going to be nearly long enough to drill all the way through this thing. I thought about going and buying a longer drill bit, but I decided I'll probably just take my chances and I flipped it over, I marked it carefully on the other side, uh, measured a couple times and marked it, and went ahead and uh, drilled through that side and it worked out pretty good. There was a little wafer piece that uh, didn't get cut out with the drill, yeah, but I was able to push it out and it was a nice clean hole all the way through. So it's finally time to do a test fit. After my test fit, I marked how much of the handle came out of the top and I went ahead and sawed that off. And I realized this thing will probably never be used as an actual hammer or mallet in my shop, but I wanted to go ahead and put a wedge in it and make it strong anyhow. It was time for some final sanding. So here also I went through the grits and I went all the way to 320. After that, I wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a square block so that I could redefine all of those shoulders. Then I took my air compressor, I blew off all of the dust, and finally I wiped the whole surface down with tack cloth. We put lots of glue on it, and we glued it together. I lined up the wedge the way I wanted it and I drove the wedge home also. So in the event that we decide to use this as a mallet, we sure can. But somehow I don't think my daughter Sai will let me do that. After that, I carefully sanded down the extra handle that stuck over the top with my sander. And even though it looks nice and pretty, we'll never get to see that because Thor's hammer has one more accent piece on top. Here I've got a 3 8 inch thick piece of walnut and I'm cutting a 3 inch disc with a hole saw to put on top of it.
I'm going to go ahead and use the CA glue here as well so it dries fast because I think at this point it's about two hours until movie time. As you probably noticed, by using the hole saw, there's always a hole in the middle. So I figured I'll go ahead and use my countersink bit, which basically drills a 3 8 inch countersink. And Sai will cut me a plug with our plug cutter here, that's 3 8 of an inch, so that we can fill that hole. And I'm using size version of the Thor's Hammer woodworking mallet to drive this plug home. Next we just have to sand that plug flush and it practically disappears. I have decided to use lacquer for the finish uh, and this is actually my go-to finish for almost everything. Lacquer dries really in about five or six minutes and you can recoat it right after that. And probably within 30 to 45 minutes it's completely dry. And we do have to hurry for our movie. You can see Sai looking up at the clock. We actually had the heat going full blast in our shop and I had one of the heaters pointing right at the hammer here and it dried very fast. Yeah, as soon as it was dry, we wanted to take a quick video to show you the various sizes of mallets that we use in the shop and compare them to the actual size of Thor's hammer. This thing is a beast, but uh, we sure had fun making it. Thanks for watching.